Hey guys, welcome to the Killing the Tea podcast. This is Gare and Kate, and we are going to be discussing all things chills, thrills, and kills. Kate and I are going to be talking about our favorite books, TV shows, and movies that are in the thriller or crime fiction genre, as well as some reading habits and other items related to how we met on Bookstagram um, that will fit in with this podcast. So thank you so much for joining us, and we hope that you have fun and get totally terrified. What have you read recently? Anything good? I read The Housemaid. Yes. By Frieda McFadden. And everybody was like, you need to read this. Like, you'll love it. It's so good. And I was like, okay, like, I'll finally read it. Mm-hmm. And zero regrets. It was so addictive. It was like a good lifetime movie. I just absolutely that, loved it. That's awesome. I read it yesterday because yesterday that's kind yesterday. of sucked too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There Did was. You still have yesterday off. I did so I wasn't expecting it to be a shitty day but like there was a there was a food truck I wanted to check out and they said they were open like 12 to 6 and I Mm -hmm. went at like a little after one and there was nobody in line so I was like score like we got there before the crowd Mm -hmm. (laughs) and we're standing there outside in the cold and 10 15 minutes whatever and the woman like comes up and she's like hey i'm just gonna let you know like we're out of basically everything Uh, okay (laughs) and i was like okay cool like when we walked up you could have taken the two seconds to be like just to let you know like we're basically sold out of everything instead Mm -hmm. of like letting me stand here freezing my fucking ass off for 10 minutes in northern new york basically in canada Oh my gosh. And you so that was a little anything. annoying. So I got home and I, I read the the housemaid and I absolutely loved it. I need to bump it up on my list. Yeah, I think you'll really enjoy it. It's just yeah. like binge worthy and like fun. Like it's not anything that's like too deep or serious, but it's just or very entertaining. No, no bloody. Well, I've been reading bloody. <laughs> I finally started The Sandman. Well, I have mm-hmm. finished it since, but I read that last week and then I already started Stalker. And something kind of cool was a few podcast episodes ago. You told me to read it in December and I did it, but like it just happened because I needed, I'd had like two or three books that I didn't love in a row. And I was like, I need to read a book that I know I will love. And so I knew that would be one. But I also still started it when you told me to. So I think it was somewhere in my subconscious. But Probably. great winter read. If you like mm-hmm. gory stuff or if you're okay with it. Yeah. Um, it, it's def- If you don't like that, like it's, it's not for you. Like it is very, very bloody and descriptive. But I love it. warnings. Yeah, you have turned me into a Lars Kepler fan and a Juna Lena fan, more importantly. Uh, Juna, Juna, Juna. I love him. <laughs> I love him. I'm so excited. I think the next one comes out in like July. That's going to be exciting. I am going to together. be. Oh, thank God. I know. That'll be really good. <sighs> yeah. There's a lot coming out in 2023 that I'm excited for. Yeah, me too. I'm trying yeah. to think of what else I've read. Well, the other book that I was going to say for 2023 is something that I'm going to be discussing as part of our theme tonight. Mm-hmm. So I'll just wait to, nice. to get to that. But I am terribly excited because a couple of days ago, you text messaged me and said you had the best icebreaker and you were like you. patting yourself on the back. I was having a moment where I was like, how did I never think of this one? So. Are you ready to have your ice broken? <laughs> oh my god, I can't wait for you to break my ice. I've just been so excited for... Well, I always look forward to Tuesdays, but yeah. I've just been so excited for this icebreaker since you texted me the other day that I was like, yeah. oh my god, like trying to think of like what it what it is, what it could ready. be, what my answer is going to be. Yes. I'm ready. I know. Now I feel like I built it up and I'm nervous, but I think you'll, I think you'll still like it anyway, though. No, I'm 
I can't wait. You've never so disappointed we know me. That you read physical books. Mm-hmm. Well, you would say it's more off. Like Kindle's very rare, right? Um, can, yeah, Kindle's rare. So it Kindle's is. Rare. It is always physical books more often. So, mm-hmm. what do you use as a bookmark? <gasps> I love this. And is it I, multiple things? I have multiple bookmarks. Um, Bookshelf Tees on Instagram. Mm-hmm. She makes, her name's Lauren. She makes the best like t shirts with like bookish sayings on them and everything. And when you order from her, like you get like a complimentary bookmark. Um, but she also sells bookmarks too. And nice. so I always order bookmarks from her. Mm-hmm. Um, which are very like random, like whatever I see on her website. But I also have one that I ordered myself. Um, Mm -hmm. It's like a longer one. Mm -hmm. And it is um, like a dark gray leather. Mm -hmm. And my name is embossed in it. Ooh, that's pretty cool. So that's like my go-to bookmark. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I was wondering, because, like, I don't have bookmarks, but the answer I had prepared was something that if you use a Kindle, one of the things that you need in your life is the remote page turner, (laughs) because you can actually put something, and I'll link it in the notes, you can actually put something, you put it, like, on the side of the Kindle, and then you have this tiny little remote, and so you can just sit back and read and just press the remote to change the pages so it's not a bookmark but it is a kindle accessory that's valuable i saw that and i was obsessed with your setup the other day because yeah i have a pop socket on the back of mine Mm -hmm. which has game changer for me game Mm -hmm. changer i feel like I read faster on my Kindle, but the times that I use my Kindle is if I get approved for something on NetGalley instead of getting a physical copy of it. Um, If I'm being a brat and kind of having like a manic moment and I'm like, I need to read this book right now and I don't mm-hmm. have a physical copy and I don't want to wait to order it because my closest bookstore is in Canada, yeah. I will um get it on my Kindle. Yeah. That makes sense. Or some of my romance, some of my like steamy, smutty romance mm-hmm. are like Kindle Unlimited. Yep. Um, or like a dollar or two on the Kindle. So, yeah. and the way that I fly through those, I would have to have a new house for, <laughs> yeah, like, for all of just like the gay smut books that I read. <laughs> you could just have like a little shack just for all your smut. I'll love shack, literally. Yeah. Like. <laughs> flying through them but yeah that is what i use for a bookmark i can't dog ear a page i wish i could be one of those people that like you could tell that like a book is really well loved you know like with the spine cracked and like Mm -hmm. but i just can't do it i can't imagine you doing that no i I couldn't imagine you folded pages over either i have done it occasionally if i'm in a pickle the way that my mind works is just ridiculous sometimes so like i will be like oh i need to do like a b and c but then like randomly i'll be like where's my bookmark where's my bookmark and i like it's in like a different room so like i'll dog you the page but then like Mm -hmm. after i'm like pressing it down trying to (laughs) putting a dumbbell on top of it (laughs) yeah just like apologizing to the author (laughs) oh my gosh that's good i like your setup I know. And you know, the thing is too, is like, I have this like imagination of you having like just the single bookshelf of like all of the physical books that you like absolutely love. Yeah. That's what I'm slowly working on accumulating. And I have a secret. (gasps) You're so mysterious. I know. I have a separate wish list on Amazon for books that mm-hmm. I want you to own. Oh, that's so cute. So, like, when things come up where I have, like, an idea for, like, a little care package. Oh. But yeah, it has to be, like, perfect. That. And I'm OCD about things, so. That's okay. 
I just can't wait to like put everything together the way that it oh, it's looks in so my mind. Fun. Yeah. We do yeah. have our faves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. And there's one coming, there's one book that I have in mind that I think is going to be one of your faves that I know you haven't read yet. Ooh. So because I was Make listening to us today um, <laughs> yeah. when I went to get Subway mm-hmm. after work. I had a, a rose and a thorn moment and I was like cracking up in the parking lot thinking of you because like <laughs> nobody else would like love this story but you. <laughs> um, I told you like a few episodes ago that the mm-hmm. thing that pisses me off about my subway is I never have cash. Oh yeah. They only take card and like there's no thing to tip on the card machine. Yeah. And I always feel like an asshole. And today was the day that I put my card in and they finally had the option to tip on your card. Good. And I was like, oh my God, I feel so great. I'm so happy that they finally did that. So I grabbed my sub and I was like, I can't wait to tell Kate this. Mm -hmm. And as I'm walking to my car in this dark parking lot, there's a white serial killer van backing (laughs) up next to my car. Oh my gosh. And I was like, no, now I'm going to get murdered. Like, I was so happy that you can tip on your card now at Subway and now I'm going to get like slaughtered in this parking lot. Yeah. Because I just saw a TikTok of like a security camera footage that was like, women should be really safe in Michigan right now. And it showed like a car backed up next to this woman's car. When she went to get in, like two men got out and like tried to like kidnap her. Wow. Wow. But homegirl kicked their asses. Good for her. Like she was like, bam, bam, bam. And they were like scurrying away, like trying to get back in the car. And this like guy came to like help her. And she like just like took off running in the opposite direction. And I was like, good for you. But I'm not probably as tough or as smart (laughs) as she is. So I was like watching this serial killer van back up next to my car. And I was like, no. I would definitely have been nervous. It's just, I I know how my Tuesday is going. So like, it would just make sense that I had the kind of day that I had and then get murdered in a parking lot. (laughs) Speaking of things we love, speaking of torture and torment and all of the things that make a Mm -hmm. good book, a good book. I was scrolling through and I Mm -hmm. saw the silent patient and I was like, Hey, did you love this? Are you with the people that hate it? And we both love it. And then you had a great idea to talk about some books we came up with this idea together it was yeah it was joint i don't know how we haven't talked about the silent patient i know because that's one of my favorite reading experiences that i've ever had Mm -hmm. i remember reading that during the week here's the thing too Yeah. Anything that takes place outside of the United States in a book, Mm -hmm. or I guess Canada, but I don't, other than a couple of people, I don't get to read much from Canadian authors, but anything that takes place outside of the US, I have to take more time with because it's a country that I'm not familiar with. Right. So I remember that when I was like, psychological thriller, I think it takes place in like London, like I I need to be like take my time with it not rush through it on a weekend i was so pissed at myself because (laughs) of the fact that like i need to go to bed so i can wake up in the morning and like i don't want to use my bookmark for this book like i want to read this cover to cover in one setting Mm -hmm. the imagery the cinematic like Mm -hmm. elements to that story the characters i just love that book Mm -hmm. with all of my heart i do too i love it a lot i had the same experience where like i was so mad that i had to work because i think i started Mm -hmm. it at night and so like i probably read it for like four hours one night and then i was like uh well i'm falling asleep i'll just finish it tomorrow and then i had work but I, every chance I got, like, if a video was uploading, I was reading. If I was drying my hair, I was reading. I remember I still worked in the office at the time mm-hmm. because, like, that was, like, one of those moments where whenever I left my house, I took that book with me. Yes. 
like it didn't matter if I was like sitting in a drive through waiting for coffee or mm -hmm. if, you know, I got like a lunch break and I just read like somewhere wherever I could. Mm -hmm. I just remember bringing that book with me everywhere and like I could not shut up about it. Yeah. It's so good. I love it. I love that book. And a big part of the book is that it blows your mind. Yes. Pretty massively at the end. So then we were thinking about what other books have we read that have just blown our minds mm -hmm. to pieces. That's the thing with that reading experience. My biggest takeaway was when I read it, I was looking for all of these clues. I was searching. Mm -hmm. I was trying to come up with all of these theories because you really get immersed in the story. You're not just like looking to find out what the twist is in the end and then like move on to something yeah. else. Yeah. That's and I was doing point. so much detective work inside of my brain when mm -hmm. I was reading it that by the time the end came and I got to the twist, I was like, son of a bitch. Like mm -hmm. he completely distracted me. Just Yes. This entire book by purposely putting things in that you think you should be paying attention to yep. just to like wallop you with something in the end that you didn't see coming. So amazing. Like so good. I was obsessed with that book. I am. I am obsessed with that book as well. Um, I don't see a lot of people who are releasing stories that use the same technique that he used for the yes the twist yeah. in that mm -hmm. you don't you see know, that plot device like, or whatever gone girl um girl on the train they did like you know they kind of built different ways to have like your unreliable narrator mm -hmm. um but i haven't seen anything that he's that anyone's done that messes with you like he has with that one i know i could i was trying to think of if i'd even seen a tv show that did it i have i haven't it's a very unique one it's yeah really i hard to guess i can't think i can't think of anything else even if you could guess part of it you would not guess all of it mm -mm. i don't think and if someone does you're fucking boss yeah, if you guess the ending to this book, you should probably reevaluate some decisions in your life and just be like a full-on detective yes. at this point. <laughs> like you will solve you will solve cases quicker than yeah, most of the pros out there. Mhm. Mm but yeah, yeah, there's definitely been there's been some different books for different reasons that have really messed with my head and mm -hmm. either like terrified me or like did something that made them such an enjoyable experience because of mm -hmm. the ma basically manipulation that the author yeah. like toyed with me so yep. because of the silent patient like we just kind of had this idea to like name all of the books that have really really messed with us yeah I can't wait to hear what you have to say. How many do you have? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I have a list of five, and then I have what I would call four honorable mentions. <laughs> <laughs> so I have nine. <laughs> I have eight. Uh, okay. So we're okay. Right. <laughs> I bet some of maybe a couple will match. We'll see. Probably. Probably. That was kind of my my thing was, you know, to be honest, we we kind of tease me. I make fun <laughs> of myself and you make fun of my, me for this. Um, for like how many times I talk about like The Woman Inside by E.G. Scott. Yes. But there are times where like a book will be applicable to like whatever topic but like it's always like for like a different reason yeah you know it so is. i've run into that as well because i run into that a lot when i work for she reads yeah i bet like they're like yeah, a... dark academia who done it like right 
dual timeline, unreliable narrator. And I'm like, Ashley Winstead, Ashley Winstead, Ashley Winstead, exactly. Ashley Winstead. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So, yes. and it's like hard too when you're, you know, it's kind of like what we do. Like, it's hard when mm-hmm. you and I are like, what books mess with your head? And it's hard not to mention something that we've already like. Yes. Talked, talked about a about. lot. That's what, yeah. As So my honorable mentions are all ones that we've definitely read like the synopsis for and like everything so they're my ones where i'll be like also these four at the end yeah yeah i probably have like honorable mentions and i have i've probably i would say discussed most of most of mine in some capacity Mm -hmm. or another i'm just gonna say it right now the woman inside is one of mine I figured. Yeah. <laughs> like it does mess with your mind. There's no way I could talk about books that don't mental mentally manipulate you without mm-hmm. mentioning that one. Um I agree. because it's one of those things that kind of took the the whole um his and her perspective mm-hmm. in a relationship. And when you're reading her perspective, things do not add up to what you're reading with him. And you don't know Mm -hmm. who to believe. You don't know who's lying. But like the fact of the matter is, it's just like communication and the lack thereof between people can be extremely (laughs) dangerous. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think another reason that book messed with my head so badly is because it's not something that you read and you get to a big twist at the end. It's what I call like the Hansel and Gretel effect where all of the reveals are like breadcrumbs throughout the book mm-hmm. instead of just being like, I don't know what's going on for 300 yeah. pages and then being yeah. like, Oh, okay. Like this mm-hmm. is like, okay, what does this mean? And then they kind of tell you and then something mm-hmm. else happens. And like the reveals are very like stacked, like yes. little breadcrumbs. Yeah. I th- that's a really good way to describe it. Cause yeah, you're not going to be like shocked. Well, you might be, but it's not a twist shock. It's not, it's not one of those, I was still shocked in the end with like a couple yeah, of things. Yeah, that's why things, I took it back. <laughs> but there were, uh, there were enough reveals that I knew it wasn't going to be a cheap thrill at the end, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. It wasn't going yeah. to be like, this husband disappeared and, and then like, oh, it's aliens. And I didn't know that there was like an alien aspect or it's like oh like this husband disappeared and he's this like horrible businessman and like it's really like oh no he like fell off his bike and just went unconscious for a couple of days in a ditch yeah like it was leading up to something that was really huge and very um, fitting to the story and it's yeah yeah so just knock that one off my list um because the woman inside by E.G. Scott. I'm listen. I'm the fanboy. I can't help you it. Are. That's okay. I can't help it. There's everything in my life can be related to why I love the woman inside by E.G. Scott. I get it. I really do get it. <laughs> I just I can't help myself. I yeah. Think about that book. It's, it's way so more than good. very good. I, that I was another one that was very difficult to put down. Because, yeah, things but, are changing all the time. And I the love the cast of that book. Yeah. Love them. One Rebecca day. and Paul. Hopefully someone will um, make a movie or a TV show. One of the two. I think TV show would make the most sense because you could bounce behind, between them. I would have to say a TV show would make the most sense. Mm-hmm. But I would be... I would be that annoying fan Mm -hmm. if they did it. I'd be like, this cast needs to be perfect. The director needs to be like David Fincher. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it has to be like on HBO Max because like, yes, you need some, some steam and on cable. Hell no. Hell no. No. It'd be a half hour. Yeah, (laughs) it would (laughs) be a half hour movie (laughs) on cable. Like no way. People we be like, need, what happened? <laughs> we need like sex violence and foul language, like all of yeah. like the trifecta of what makes a good TV show. 
<laughs> yes, that. So. So. I guess I kicked so. it off with the woman inside. I, you did. I don't know. I don't know what happened. You got us off to the races. It was literally like the first one I picked. I was like, mm-hmm. easy, easy yeah. peasy. I was scrolling and I saw it and I was like, Garrett get that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I know. I know. But something interesting I noticed when I was looking at them. So I brought up the silent patient just because like there are some people who read it and I just really don't think it's a good book. It's kind of a controversial one in the review section at least. But as I was starting to pick other mind blowing books, <clears throat> I started to notice that I had two others that I also know have really controversial feelings about them. So I kind of did a little bit of a theme without intending to. And the first or my next one. No, it's not my next one. It's my first one. So it's my our next first, one. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> these true. books all these are our babies. We they share them. Blend together. Yes, yes, these are our <laughs> books. <laughs> because whatever I read that you have it, uh-huh. I'm gonna be like, you need to read it. I know. So my first pick was We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. The synopsis says a beautiful and distinguished family, a private island, a brilliant damaged girl, a passionate political boy, a group of four friends, the liars whose friendship turns destructive, a revolution, an accident, a secret, lies upon lies true love the truth we are liars is a modern sophisticated suspense novel from new york times best-selling author e lockhart so that doesn't tell you tons about it but i will say that one of the reasons some people don't like it is it's kind of written in like it's kind of written lyrically Mm -hmm. so it's like it that looks more like the structure of a poem sometimes when you're reading it. And I didn't know if I would love that either, but it's not a poem. And so eventually you just feel like you're just reading a book. So for anyone who like sees that part of it and is like, I don't want to read a poem. You're not really reading a poem. There's just a style choice and you won't notice once you're reading. Got it. It's basically about four. Yeah. Four friends. or I think they're related. Cousins. At least at least one of the kids is related to someone who like owns the island and that's why they're there. But I thought they were all family. But this says a group of four friends. So they must not all be family. Um, they are spending the summer on an island together. And there just is some shady stuff going on between them. And so the main character whose name I don't remember and don't see in the synopsis, the main character, (laughs) she's just like trying to figure out what's actually going on with the friend group and like why it's such a mess. And then the ending is kind of like flips everything on its face. That's what I've heard. I've heard that like people are like, I, so the, the general consensus that I've seen is like, everybody's like, when you read this book, you're going to be like, okay, this is good or okay. Mm-hmm. But then when you get to the end, you're going to be like, that was a fucking masterpiece. Yeah. It's fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Did you read the sequel? I haven't read the sequel yet. I saw that and I was like, man, that has been on my TBR for a very long time. <laughs> well, now you're hooked on June Elena, so. I know. It's going to be a bit. It's gonna be bad, yeah. Stalker's 570 pages, and then I have the shards. <laughs> it's gonna take some time. I think I want to read the shards with you. Okay. I'm down. And then we can read re- then we can weed. <laughs> then we can read We Were Liars. <laughs> yeah. I have to um I feel like I remember it being short. Yeah, 240 y- pages. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It's YA as well, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem as to why I think I haven't picked up the book yet because I feel like whenever I go, I'm never usually in the YA section. That's a good. I'm just in like fiction or thriller. Mm -hmm. Um, and if it was there, I probably would have scooped it up already. Yeah, it is. It is a thriller. It is like a young adult thriller. Yeah, yeah. I've Mm -hmm. heard fantastic things, so I'm very excited for this. It's really good. I loved it a lot. 
And I love something. I want to tell you a book that reminds me of it. And if I tell you the book, though, I just realized it'll ruin it. So I'm not going to tell you. Is it a YA book? No. Oh, then okay. It's one we have both read. Ooh. So I'll tell you after we read it. Okay. Okay. I'll... And then you'll be like, oh, yeah, I know why you couldn't tell me. <laughs> uh, I'll make room for it. Um, yeah. Man, that might be next then. I've been like being a little I selfish. I could start reading it at night when I go to sleep since I shouldn't read Stalker. <laughs> <laughs> God, I don't blame you. Um, maybe I'll get it on my Kindle. Oh, yeah. That would work too. Because I just DNF'd a book before we started recording tonight. So mm-hmm. that would be fun. Yeah. Just you should. To, I'm just going to do it. Okay. Um. Well, speaking of things that everybody should read, mm-hmm. one book that completely fucked with my head is The Shards by Brett Easton Ellis. <laughs> um, yeah. It is a 600 page odyssey of yeah. just fantastic writing, it's cinematic. He can just tell a story that transport you into such a, like, unique place Mm -hmm. visually. I just love the imagery and the story. I love this book Mm -hmm. so much. Um, This is how much I love this book. The reason I was curious about it is because it's Brett Easton Ellis' first book in 13 years. Mm -hmm. And it is about um, a boy... Well, well, he's a teenager. He's like 17, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, whose name is Brett. And his friend group in Los Angeles in 1981, they kind of, their lives start to change because there's this like new guy at their school who's like a senior and he's very mysterious and he doesn't open up a lot. And at the same time that their friend group is kind of changing with the arrival of this new student. Brett kind of becomes obsessed with this case of a serial killer in Los Angeles who he thinks could possibly be taunting him and targeting his friend group. Mm. Obviously a serial killer storyline in the eighties in Los Angeles. I'm like, this is a no brainer (laughs) for me. The coming of age aspect of this story And the dynamic between all of the friends had me so invested in this story that whenever the serial killer was brought up, I was like, oh shit, that's right. There's a serial killer in this book. Oh, that's a really good like tidbit to know. Yeah. Like I was just so invested in the story and I just like loved everything about it and like the imagery and all of the different things that were going on that it is the perfect blend of coming of age, um, literary fiction and Mm -hmm. thriller because the pacing gets like more intense obviously Mm -hmm. like you're gonna get answers to things but I just loved the way this story was told and I loved the cast and I loved Brett as a character Mm -hmm. um that there were a lot of times I forgot that there was a serial killer in this story that's impressive and, like, that's kind of what drew me to it in the first place. But, like, I finished this So book. it is, like, really character-driven. It's very character-driven. That's cool. But it's also... It's kind of like a... Yeah, I would say, like, coming of age would be mm-hmm. the best way to describe it. It would kind of be, like, you and I growing up in the times of, like, the Boston Strangler. Oh, Yeah. You know, like, we would obviously, as, like, people who are very curious with true crime, Mm -hmm. would be like, that's freaking crazy. But then, like, some of our friends would be like, it doesn't affect me. Right. You know? But it is just a book that completely messed with my head. Because I could not stop thinking. I still haven't stopped thinking about it. I've been reading books that I'm like, that was okay. That was good. All right. DNF. Like, I just haven't found anything that, like, this is how how I feel when I read this book is how Mm -hmm. I can imagine people felt when The Secret History by Donna Tartt came out. Yeah, I bet so. And they found their favorite book. Yeah. Ever. Ever. 
a lot of people's favorites. Yeah. And it's just. That's how I felt after reading Evelyn Hugo. And then I read two books that would have been disappointing even if I hadn't read Evelyn Hugo, but it made them worse. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel about the shards is like. If. If I. Stop (laughs) yelling. If Mm -hmm. I never find another book ever again that makes me feel this way, I will be fine knowing that the shards is like the book that made me feel this way. Wow. That's a big thing. The last like the last quarter of the book is just balls to the wall crazy. (laughs) That's all I can like think of to explain it. It's just freaking nuts. There's every trigger warning known to man in this book, Mm -hmm. though. I mean, there's violence, there's a lot of sex, there's a lot of like just inappropriate things. There is the aftermath of animal violence. So it's the only thing I'm bracing myself for. That's usually a trigger warning for me. Yeah. I was so invested in the story that I was like, well, that is awful. Yeah. Yeah. But then compared to what some of the characters go through, you're like, maybe I would have rather been the animal. Cool. (laughs) So pre-order your copy (laughs) because the shards comes out January 17th. (laughs) My other book that also is very controversial, which is not what I was intending, but what just happened is behind her eyes by sarah Mm pinborough i think you didn't love it right i did love it it. you did i i read it and loved it yes okay cool yes i couldn't tell from your face i was like wait did he hate it (laughs) no i really really liked it. which if you did it'd be okay so uh it's one of those endings again it's the ending that makes people love it or hate it but Mm -hmm. in general the book is about louise who's a single mom and she's a secretary and when she goes out one night she meets this really great guy at a bar um and they like kiss after they meet each other so then she goes to her new job on like that next monday and the guy that she met with is her new boss david um and he's married is the other thing that she then finds out. But like they had all this chemistry. So she's like, what is happening? And he's still a little obsessed with her and kind of like watching what she does all the time. So then she bumps into um, Adele. Sorry, lost what I was saying. Bumps into Adele who's new to town and in need of a friend. But she's married to David. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so she wants to be friends with this guy's wife. She also wants to sleep with the guy. So basically on the outside, David and Adele look like picture perfect. Like all their friends kind of think that. But also when like people aren't <laughs> around, it seems like David's really controlling of Adele mm-hmm. and she can't figure out why Adele is scared of him. So she's just trying to figure out what's going on in their relationship while she's also really into David, the husband. And she just keeps finding out more and more interesting things about what's actually going on in that house. And then there's a big twist at the end that you either love or hate. (laughs) That's a big one. There's also some amenable violence in this one. Sometimes I just don't, you know what, let's be honest, Mm -hmm. I don't care when people die in a book. When animals do, it usually bothers me more, but there are some books that are so crazy. Yeah. I recommended The Kind Worth Killing to a friend, and I was Mm -hmm. like, I love this book, you're going to love it, it's so good, it's one of my favorites. And she Mm -hmm. texted me and was like super pissed off because she was like... There a cat dies in this book. And I was like, it does? And I was like, did you read the rest of the book? Like, who cares about the fucking cat? It's a cat. <laughs> it's a cat. But she loves cats. I know. I get it. I get it. I and there are sometimes when I know I'm just I think we talked about that on a couple episodes ago. Like, 
if I'm in a certain mood, if I'm in a soft, cute, cuddly Kate mood, I'm not going to read Nordic Noir because I'm not in the right headspace. But when I am in the right headspace, I'm like, yeah, there, some bad shit happens. Yeah. Happens. It's easy yeah. for me to skip over then. I think if it's like a dog or a cat or something that's like very prominent and like they're trying to do something to show this animal's personality that's mm-hmm. when it like bothers me more but oh, if it's just like so oh bad. i let the dog out and then i let the dog in i heard the dog bark and there's like you're not giving the animal any personality i'm like mm-hmm. okay we're kind of new you yeah. know it's I'm like being the that. wife of a detective like if you're an animal in a thriller you're about as safe as being the wife of a detective <laughs> That's amazing. You're let's so just, right. <laughs> let's just be honest. <laughs> like, sorry, Gwyneth Paltrow, but we all saw it coming. That would be another funny animals, t-shirt. Same. Animals aren't safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have to make so, a spreadsheet. Behind her eyes. It's great. Mm-hmm. In my opinion. I loved it. And it got made into a TV series on Netflix that was really, really great as well. I haven't watched this the series yet. It's really great. There's like very few places where it deviates too mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really, really did enjoy that book. And um, I liked the twist ending. Mm-hmm. So I sign on with that one too. I wonder if this is one of yours. In my dreams, I hold a knife. That was in my honorable mention. So, yes. Okay. Okay. So, we all know, I'm sure by now, that (laughs) Kate and I are huge fans of Ashley Winstead. Um, If you don't know, In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife, it is about um, a group of friends who returns to their college uh, for their 10-year reunion and um they're all still plagued by the mysterious murder of one of their friends so you have like a dual timeline they're kind of like suspicious of each other um one of them i think was arrested for the murder and then found to be innocent there's that question of maybe he really did do it and he just got away with it Mm -hmm. and so there's also, you know, the reunion of a very toxic group of friends mm-hmm. um, that you can't stop reading about. And nope. there's also somebody else out there who is kind of like playing a little bit of a I know you did last summer role who really just mm-hmm. wants to know the truth. Yeah. And this book messed with my head so much because mm-hmm. when I was reading it, I was like, I don't care what the ending to this book is because I'm just so invested in all of these characters. And I love yeah. this plot so much that even if it's something really dumb, mm-hmm. I'm not going to care. I'm still going to love this book no matter what. Right. And then I got to the ending and it, the ending to that book was something that disturbed me so much mm-hmm. that I still to this day, think about how much I would be like in a mental hospital if I were one of these characters. I know. (laughs) It is one of the most disturbing things. Not in it. Well, I mean, it it is a little violent when you find out what happens Mm -hmm. to the friend who was murdered. Um, But psychologically, that book (laughs) messed me up for We're going on about two years now since I've read it. I know. And I still to this day will just be like, I can't imagine that being my life. So in my dreams, I hold a knife. (laughs) Go read it, people. (laughs) But no one's surprise whatsoever. Right. I hope someone is like, you know what? I'm finally going to read it. And they just get to experience it new and fresh all over or in a way that we can't i feel the same way and i hope that person also hasn't read the woman inside (laughs) yes if it's the same person like can you imagine how happy they're gonna be (laughs) and then they're like hey i'll just give behind her eyes a shot too Mm -hmm. oh my god trifecta literally read them all 